And we are live in the studio with Technicult Radio Plays. And first up, we have our very first group, a really talented Journey to the West. This is Elisa, a 23-year-old girl who likes to camp outside. She's walking in the forest now to find a perfect spot to rest. Um, this seems like a great place for camping. It is getting cold. It is not very safe to directly light the woods in the forest. It's advised that listeners at home do not attempt this. What flavor of top ramen should I choose? Oh, chicken it is. Now Elisa has to wait while the ramen is in the pot. What should I do when I wait? Maybe play some guitar? Above her head, the sun is setting low. The Milky Way is starting to reveal itself. It reminds Elisa the Northeast Blackout of 2003. The whole city of New York was shut down. A lot of people from New Jersey couldn't leave New York. She had to stay there for two weeks with her parents as well. But she actually enjoyed it. She could hang around on the street all day listening to a guy playing the guitar. And now, she's playing the same melody. From the other side of the forest comes a man, Ethan, 24, with similar camping outfit. So sorry. Please keep playing. It's, it's a wonderful melody. Oh, it's okay. I'm getting bored anyways. My name's Ethan. Uh, nice meeting you. I'm Alisa. So, what are you cooking? It smells really good. Uh, it's nothing. Just some chicken flavored top ramen. You want some? Uh, can I? I mean, we just met. <laughs> Your body doesn't lie, huh? Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Come sit down, let me get some ramen for you. 
Mmm, this is actually really good. What did you put in it? My grandma is Asian, so she told me this secret ingredient when I was a kid. And I can give you three chances to guess. Ooh, okay, guessing. I like it. Let me see. You said she is Asian. Is it soy sauce? Um, nope. Mm, that does not make sense, really, because the soup does not look very dark. Is it MSG? No way! I'm actually MSG intolerant, and the ramen is MSG free. Oh man, this is hard. Mm. Alright, I give up. It's actually cheese and sugar. What? Cheese and sugar at the same time? No wonder it tastes so creamy and sweet. Wait, but you said only one secret ingredient. <laughs> I cannot forget about the sugar when I ask you. I mean, who would have thought putting sugar in ramen? It is strange, but it sure tastes good. Quiet, I think I hear something. What? 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 <laughs> oh crap, it's a rattlesnake. Damn it, I totally forget they love cheese. Oh no, what should we do? Just be quiet, they have bad region. Hey Elisa, you heard that joke before, right? What joke? When you see a snake, you don't have to run faster than the snake. What? You just have to run faster than your friend. <laughs> see you later. Are you alright, honey? Did you have a nightmare? You men are the worst. Oh man, what? And that right there, <laughs> that right there was Journey to the West. Did a fantastic job. Good job, everybody. You know, uh, it's been a long time that we've been working on these shows. And, you know, over the course of this time, I've actually been trying to grow out this beard, No Shave November. I don't know how well it's going. I really want to get rid of this. But I think tomorrow is the last day, so we're really close. Oh, boy. You know, a friend of mine, actually, he used to work uh, in a bell tower. And uh, you know, it, it was weird because when he rang the bell, he used his head, the front of his head more specifically. And uh, you know, one day he actually, unfortunately, fell out of the tower you know, because he was trying to ring that bell really well, but it didn't work out. And you know, he was a little confused and a little dazed, and so he fell out, and people saw him laying on the ground, and they were like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? And someone said, you know, I'm not sure, but the face rings a bell. That's my attempt at humor, folks. We're trying really hard. But you know, everything's okay. It's the fall. We're almost at uh, December. You know, the holiday season's upon us. There's sales, there's cookies, there's people traveling all over the place getting those miles. It's a great time for everybody, especially uh, business for people. Lots of gifts going around. I wonder what people are getting each other. That's the cool thing about the season. It's all about giving. It's all about uh, finding things for other people to bring them happiness. And that's why we're so happy to give you all such a great show. We're doing these radio plays. It's a lot of fun, and uh, we really enjoy it. I think, is the next group ready? Are you guys ready? They need a, a minute, and that's perfectly fine because we have a minute. We're willing to give a minute because the season, like we said, is about giving. That's what we got to do. We got to give everybody what they want. And what I think everybody wants right now is radio play. We're bringing them back, you know. NBC's bringing back the TV musicals. We're bringing back the radio plays. It's just like it used to be, you know. Do, do, do. We remember. Ah. Well, I don't remember. I'm only 20 years old. But that's okay. Well, I think. Was everything cool? You guys ready? Everything's cool, all right.
So, folks, I think we're just about ready for our next radio play. Again, another talented group. They've been working really hard on this. And uh, I think they're excited to perform. I, I'm excited to see them. So, uh, without further ado, everybody, uh, our very next group in technical radio plays, we have The Jam. Come on. Where's that darn spoon? Oh. So la uh, Red leather. Stupid. Yellow leather. Are we live? Shut up, Sharon. Hey, don't trip on any of the cords lying around. Ah! Hey. Ugh. Why am I the sound effect guy? I'm always too sound effect. Because I want to be the lead actor. We need a sound effects guy. Shut up, Max. Pipe down, everyone. We're live. Oh. <clears throat> Welcome to all of our radio listeners. Yeah, like all two of them. We are a part of the new radio features class here at UC Davis, and we are here for our radio theater debut. It is our pleasure to present our original radio drama, The Tragedy of the Cross by Stars Lovers. The title was his idea. You can tell because it's genius. Cast, would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm an animal science major. I like Disney movies and fluffy cats. I'm Lucy. I'm studying philosophy, and so far what I've learned is that all of life is pointless, including college. I don't even know what I'm doing here. And my name is Frederick Alexander Radcliffe. I am a theater and dance major, minoring in design. I once played Hamlet in middle school, and that was when I knew I was destined for Broadway. <laughs> and hi, I'm Max. I'm a fifth year engineer. Today's major. performance features Sharon as the Grand Duchess, Lucy as Princess Karina, and as the lead actor in the principal role of Prince Duncan, yours truly. Oh, and Max is the sound guy, I guess. He's not that important. Not important, my rare. I'm the most important person here. Without me, Freddy, your little city radio show burns to the ground. We don't have time for this. We've only got an eight-minute time slot. Ah, uh, yes. So without further ado, the tragedy of the Cross by Stars lovers. <coughs> Max, cue the music. Oh, music? All right, here we go, the music. Never mind, I found someone like you. What? Max, I thought you would just play the song. Eight minute time slot. Okay, fine. A lack and alas. For I, Prince Duncan, have found myself in such a pickle. For I am to wed the Duchess. Ow. As I was saying. For I am to wed the Duchess as my parents have dictated. And yet, it is not she whom I love. And our wedding is in two minutes. I can hear the wedding bells ringing already. I said, I can hear the wedding. The wedding bells ringing already. Wedding bells, Max. Max! Eight minute time slot. How those wedding bells do spell out my doom. Here comes the Grand Duchess now, stepping from her horse-drawn carriage. I was hoping for horse-drawn carriage, not helicopter, Max. Ah, darling, how radiant you look, and what a beautiful day for us to marry. The sun is shining, a breeze is blowing, and the birds are chirping. Uh, uh, Such uh, beautiful uh, birds. Uh, uh, Blue jays, I think. Oh, my God. My dear, I do not know if I can marry you. Nonsense. Kiss me, Duncan. Hmm. Max, what kind of noise is that? <laughs> what? Is it not what it sounds like when you kiss? Ah, uh, what a kiss. I swear I felt the earth shake. What is this? Someone is bursting through the church door? The... Oh, yeah. No, it's not the Kool-Aid man. It's the fair Princess Karina, my one and only true love. The angels sing a glorious song when I see her heavenly face. Hark, and hear the song of my love. That's just immature. Yes, it is I, the fair Princess Karina. I am here to oppose the marriage between Prince Duncan and the Grand Duchess, for a lack and alas. I am head over heels in love with the prince. He is the passion of my soul. Ugh, be gone, wench. The prince is mine. Ah, but the plot thickens. For here in this basket, I must reveal my firstborn child, born of Prince Duncan himself. Hear the child coo and babble. Mm. Your child is a cow? <laughs> cow. Not supposed to be a cow. Honestly, it's a bit of an improvement. Um, yes, the child is a cow. What? This isn't what I wrote in the script. Sharon, Lucy, please. I know our dear friend Max here is actually trying to ruin my performance but that doesn't mean you have to go along with his ridiculous whims. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. Welcome to live radio, Freddy. This is improv at its finest. 
Remember what you kept on saying during rehearsal? When everything goes wrong, the show must go on. Yes, but everything goes wrong refers to outside circumstances, not internal sabotage. Someone kicked Max out of the studio. Who ever heard of a princess giving birth to a cow? Uh, I did, about 15 seconds ago. Come on, Freddy. This is Davis. People love cows. Cows are accessible to the public. Yeah, I'm proud of my cow daughter. Yeah, don't have a cow, Freddy. This is dairy immature of you. All right, all right, just stop with the cow puns. Yeah, they won't really milk in it, won't they? Ow. Let's move on. Let's move. I deserve that. Wait, Lucy, what are you doing to my script? We don't need this dumb thing anymore. I never liked it anyway. We're staging a mutiny. Mutiny. Mm, <laughs> Get out of here. Hey, You're guys, stop, one, stop, stop pushing. Stop Created pushing, seriously. Stop pushing. Yeah. stop pushing, seriously, guys. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I am the fair princess Karina, and this is my cow daughter whom I love. Mm. <laughs> fair princess Karina. Why, yes, Grand Duchess. I would like to be your cow daughter's godmother. Why, but of course. What is her name? Uh, Cow Roline. Cow Patricia. What? What? Cow Patty for short. Amazing. Also, I'm a talking cow. I'm very intelligent, and I think we're all going to live happily other after. Utter after? Okay, that one wasn't as good. Really wasn't. You're right, whatever. Let's get out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic job. Folks, that right there was the jam. They did a fantastic job, don't you think? I certainly do. Oh, man, good job, everybody. Uh, you know, I was thinking maybe if anyone wants to do a uh, post-show interview, any of you want to come up in here and talk? Joni, you want to talk? All right, I think we're, we pulled someone from the show. We're going to do a post-show interview. We're going to see how it went. Come on in here. Hi. All right, Joni, you just did your show. How do you think it went? I think it went okay. We all worked really hard on it. We practiced all night yesterday. It was it really intense till like 4 in the morning, so I think, I think it went okay. All right, so now the show's over. What are you going to do now? What am I going to do now? Well, now that uh, we're done with the performance, I'm looking forward to enjoying this next performance. I think it'll be very special. There's another guitar up here, and I'm very excited for all that. Um, you know, I think after this, I'm going to study, because it's, uh, it's finals, pretty much. Good job. Yeah. Also, beard game on fleek. Thank you. It is November, but I think it's more of a lifestyle for me at this point. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good to have you on. Thank you for the interview. Thanks for coming. And there you have it. Jonah Johnson, everybody. A hero to you and me. Goodness gracious, we got another group coming up here. They got all sorts of props, and I see some, some cups and bags. I don't want to give too much away. I mean, it's, it's live radio theater. You don't want to give all the secrets out. I mean, this is what we came here for, all right? We're all excited, and you should be too. I think they'll be ready in just a moment. But we'll see you here another moment. Again, let's think about December's coming up. We've got to make some plans, folks. I mean, we've got to think about all the food we're going to eat. I'm talking gingerbread. I'm talking hot chocolate, mashed potatoes, turkey. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. I did skip breakfast. That might be part of it. Golly, I got some mashed potatoes right now. No gravy. Uh-uh. Just the way they come. Maybe a little butter. Maybe a little. A little garlic salt. Some oregano. Oof. Creamy whipped up potatoes. That's the way to do it. I think they'll be ready in just a moment, folks. But in the meantime, you know, I actually made some mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving, and they were delicious. Potatoes, salt, pepper, butter, water. Instead of milk, we used heavy whipping cream. Oh, you can pass through. It's all fine. I'm just talking about mashed potatoes. That's all it is, folks. It's mashed potatoes. Put them in a slow cooker for four hours. You got yourself some meat and potatoes. It's delicious. You're good to go? The guys, are you guys good to go? Yeah. All right, it looks like they're ready. Folks, we have our next performance and our last for today here on Technical Radio Plays. Here is College Broke Asians. I've been chasing after this thief for the past 10 years, and never have I ever been able to catch that cheeky little thief. And now, at long last, the perfect crime has occurred at our local railway station, where an aristocrat was robbed at gunpoint. Looks like it's time for me to redeem myself and finally catch Juan Gonzalez. <laughs> Hello, please come in and take a seat. Good evening, Your Excellency. Thank you for joining me here today. 
Good evening, Detective... Oh, uh, they call me Detective G. Now, can you tell me what happened on the night of the 24th? Ah, yes, Detective G. Well, here's what occurred on the night of the 24th. There I was, peacefully drinking my Earl Grey tea on the train, when all of a sudden, I heard a gunshot followed by passengers screaming and running throughout the train. It was absolute chaos, I tell you. It was such a fright that I nearly wet myself. I mean, I spilled tea all over my trousers. Yes, yes, indeed, that is what happened. And as I was cleaning up with a moist towelette, the, the door was kicked open and a masked bandit appeared before me. Oh boy, was I scared for my life. With a gun point at me, he said, My name is Juan Gonzalez. And then asked for the combination to my safe. And of course I gave it to him. I am no fool, detective. So then, he took all my precious money, jumped out of the window, and ran off on his horse with the sheriff following not too far behind. And that is all I know, Detective. Thank you for your time, Your Excellency. Two days later. Hello there, Sheriff. Come on in. Hey, Detective G. I know you have a lot on your hands, but could you tell me what happened on the night of the 24th? Yes, of course. I hope we can get the money back. That night, after I went out on patrol and ensure things were right, I then walked back to my room and began to polish my badge. You know, I take out my badge every day. Don't mean to show off, but, you know, the badge is some sort of an honor to me. It's... Hey, Sheriff, thanks for showing me your badge and all, but can we please get back to the events that occurred on the night of the 24th? Hmm, sure. That night, after I went out on patrol and things were right, I then walked back to my room and began to polish my badge. Suddenly, I heard a gunshot from one of the cabins. <coughs> I immediately went out and ran to the cabin with the sound. All passengers were shocked. They were running and screaming. It was totally a mess. I remained calm and ran through the crowd with my agility. As soon as I arrived at the crime scene, I saw a wet aristocrat who appeared so petrified. So it was speechless, an empty safe box. Additionally, the window was broken, so I deduced that the escape from there. The moment I put my head out of the window, I saw Deep on his trusty steed riding off into the dust, which confirmed my inference. It was none other than Juan Gonzalez. See, I'm smart. To stop him, I grabbed my horse and raced after him. When I caught him, we had a big fight. It was a tough fight because Juan Gonzalez was so hard to deal with. But anyway, I won the fight with my strength and quickness and successfully arrested him. However, the money was nowhere to be found. Hmm. Well, thank you for your work in catching him. My pleasure. Three days later. So, Juan Gonzalez, we meet again. Indeed. Can you tell me what happened on the night of the 24th? <laughs> Detective G! You know my only job is to take from the rich and give to the poor. You know, I heard from a good friend that a train... I said train! With a lot of gold would be coming, so I decided to pillage it. I got on the train and shot a gunshot. Kaboom! As a distraction. People screamed and ran. Ha! <laughs> stupid people. Even though there weren't even any bullets. So, I went to the front of the carriage and I saw a, a crazy rich Asian who, who was sitting, he was also wet with tea. And I said, my name is Juan Gonzalez. And I asked him for the safe combination. He gave it to me very easily. So, I opened up the safe. I grabbed the money, I jumped out the window, and I got onto my trusty steed, Steve. And as I was escaping, I saw the sheriff behind me. He caught up to me and we had a big fight. Oh, 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 oh. I would have won, but I let him have it. Good for his ego. 
So he arrested me. Right. We got that. But where is the money? I think you know that better than I do, Detective G. Twenty minutes later. They have been in there for quite a while. Should we go and check? Yes, let's go inside and take a look. Egad, why? There's nobody here. Look, a note. It's from Juan Gonzalez. He says, You have been fooled and shall never catch us. Always remember, you were robbed by Juan Gonzalez. And Detective G, also known as Detective 2 Gonzalez. Signed, Signed Juan, Juan Gonzalez 2 Gonzalez. And there we have it, folks. College broke Asians. Well, that brings us to the very end of our technical radio plays for today. But stay tuned. We're actually going to be back here next week to do two additional plays. Can you believe that? Two more plays? You're getting a real bargain here, folks. I'm telling you, two whole weeks of content. There's nothing. Oh, you can pass through. It's all right. It's, it's the holiday season. I'm willing to, to, to give people the chance to walk through. That's all, that's all the holiday season's about, folks. Again, is giving to people. Uh, Shuba, you want to come in here for a post-show interview? Absolutely, absolutely. How do you think it went? Oh, uh, I think it went pretty well, you know. Um, I think the great thing about radio theater is that it's uh, live, so anything can happen. So, you know, there was, you know, it's like my train sound effect kind of bailed on me a little bit, but that's okay, you know. I feel like the audience still got the point, and we I had a really, point. yeah, we had a really good time kind of working together as a team, um, and I think over the past few weeks, we really like created a little bit of a squad together. So really happy, and I think I'm I'm very proud of all of this and the show that we put on. Yeah. Yeah, I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you, thank you. Um, so you are going to be here next week with your show. Oh my gosh, the tables have turned. The yes, tables I have will turned. Be here next week. So is there anything you would like to potentially tease the audience with a little bit of why they should tune in next week to hear uh, Jordan and his show? Well, you know, I think our show, it's going to be very uh, relatable to a lot of people. We're tackling a subject a lot of people like Thanksgiving, but you'll have to see more soon. But right now we're going to go right back to the radio station. Take it away, guys. We're clear.